everybody, my name is Barbara. I'm the horn player and quintet of the Americas. And today I, and along with some of my friends in the quintet, are going to talk to you about how all sound is vibration and how different qualities of sound depend on different materials and sizes of materials. Did you know that you cannot have a sound without something vibrating? All sound is what we hear when something is vibrating. When something vibrates, it moves through the air in a wave, and that wave takes the air to your eardrum, and then your brain can interpret that as sound. Here is a very fun way to actually see the sound waves. So one of the things you can do is get it, if you have a large stainless steel bowl at home, get the bowl and fill it pretty full with water, and then you can take a wooden spoon like this, and you can hit the ball on the end, on the edge, and you can actually see the sound waves as well as the, the motion going across the ball. And if you put your hand very gently up against the ball, you can feel the vibrations. So that's a fun thing to do at home. I play French horn in Quintet of the Americas, and this is my French horn. I got my first French horn when I was in eighth grade and I had heard the sound and I thought it was so beautiful. And I picked up my, the horn the first time to play and it sounded like this. And I thought, well, how do you make it sound? Because I did not know that you have to have a vibration to have sound. What I have to do, what any brass player has to do to get a sound on their brass instrument is to vibrate their lips together like this. Now you can try that at home. You can try like if you were gonna play a tuba, you would have a very loose vibration, like sounding like a horse, like that. And by making that kind of vibration, any kind of vibration with my lips, I get a sound. I put it into the mouthpiece, which is, here's my, my mouthpiece, which is very small. It's the smallest of all the brass instruments, horn mouthpiece. I connect it to the horn itself, and then the horn acts like a big megaphone. And the material of the horn, this metal, plus the length of the instrument, and the fact that it's a conical shaped piece of tubing, it's not straight, it's more cone shaped like a, an ice cream cone it gives it the particular sound, which is a nice mellow sound. So again, I have to vibrate my lips. And that's how I get a sound on the instrument. There are many things in nature that make wonderful sounds. Next, we'd like to show you a video of a cricket. A cricket makes that wonderful chirping sound that you hear outside, particularly in the summer. Sometimes a cricket gets into your house and you hear it inside. The bottom of a cricket wing is covered with teeth-like ridges, and that makes it rough. The upper surface of the wing is like a scraper. So when the crickets rub the upper and lower parts of their wings together, you hear that chirping sound. First in the video, you're gonna hear what it sounds like in real time. And then you're gonna see a slow motion of the video, a slow motion of this cricket moving of the wings. And because it's slowed down, the vibrations are gonna be slower and you're gonna hear the sound lower. Anytime you have a slower vibration, you're gonna have a lower sound or a lower pitch.
We've been collecting instruments made by Native Americans for quite some time. We have a really nice collection and I'd like to show some of these instruments to you now. This is a rattle made out of claws, of an animal claws. You can see the different like toenails. This is a shaker made out of seed pods that have been dyed green. There's another shaker or maraca made out of a gourd and it's very nicely decorated. You can see the decorations there. Here's another one that's been nicely decorated. See the parrot? And here's another one that's very beautiful with red and black cat, red cats on a black background. Sounds a lot different. They sound different depending on what's inside. Here are some scratchers from Peru made out of gourds, very nicely decorated like they look like animals. And they have scratches on the belly. So you can take a stick and scratch down it and you get what we call a guiro or a scratcher. There's that nice one. Here's another interesting animal shape. Let's see if I can hold it so you can see the back and the legs and the tail. Here's another one. This one looks more like perhaps an, a bigger animal. Then we have some more rattles, Native American rattles. This one is made with small turtle shells and decorated with rawhide on the bottom. There's another one very nicely decorated gourd. Here's another scratcher made out of metal, and someone decided to just use a comb to play it. I'll play this drum for you. You can hold it in the back with the rawhide. It's hide stretched over a frame. And I have three more instruments I'd like to show you. These are all rain sticks. This one is very nicely decorated with like markers and feathers. Sounds like this. I like this sunny, sunny face. Cheers it all up. Here's just a regular old rain stick. This one goes on forever. And Here's one from the Amazon. This decorated, the rattan is, is decorated with these black markings. So. If we were visiting your class, we would have students come up and perform with us on the instruments we brought. But today, as part of this workshop, we're gonna show you that you can make some instruments at home and then we'll invite you to make videos performing with us. And you can also perform with us in the second video. Now I'd like to show you how the materials that you use to make an instrument can affect the color of the sound or what we call the timbre of the, of the instrument. I've collected some materials here and I'd like to show you how you can use them to make different instruments and they will all sound different. I've taken a lot of materials and I've put them all in the same size container. So if we hear a difference in the sound, it will only be because of the material in the container. The first container here is a container that I put black beans in. The next container has a dried fruit or raisin. You can hear even the difference in black beans. The raisins sound lower because they're a little bigger and heavier. In this one I have rocks. Rocks are very heavy and the sound is very heavy sounding. It's lower. Here I put pistachios. 
And in this one, we have rice. Rice is very lightweight and the sound is very high. Now I've put lids on all my containers and you can hear how they sound. These are the black beans. These are the raisins. Hear how they sound different from the black beans. Now, the next one has the rocks. The next one has the pistachios. Compare the black beans to the pistachios. And the lightest of them all, the rice. And again, the lightest, it's the highest. You can make instruments like these. You can take any container. You can take a box or one of these plastic containers from takeout food and fill them with whatever you'd like and see what kind of sound you get. Now we're going to talk about how you can make some of these instruments at home. Remember this guiro made out of tin and someone used a comb to use it as a scratcher? Well, you could take a tin can, an empty vegetable can or something. If it has ridges, there you are. Immediately, you have a scratcher. You can use your fingernails, you could use a comb, you could use uh, a spoon, something else to make it rhythmic. You may have an empty white container like this. These make terrific drums. If you take the top off, you'll get even more resonance. You get a lower sound. You can decorate it by taking off the label. The paper label is easy to peel off. And then you can cut some paper and tape it around and take your markers or crayons and make a nice design so that you have your very own beautiful drum. Again, remember, if you take the lid off, you'll get a nice drumming sound. You don't need a plastic container to make a rattle or a shaker. You can take any old box and fill that with some material. Be sure to tape it up well. Or you can take a juice container, empty juice container, and you can even screw the top back in if you have a big juice container and it's already sealed, just ready for you. The very easiest instruments you can make at home are made out of bottles, perhaps a juice carton, something like this that already has a lid. So you can just take the lid off, like I just did on this big bottle, and put a few beans or grains or whatever you want in there. You don't have to put very many. And you have something, you can put more or less whatever you want to do. You'll have a rhythmic instrument. Works well. Get those things out. And I'll put them in this water bottle. So you may have an empty water bottle. Put some beans in here. And you put the lid back on. ready to go and it doesn't use up very many beans. I think I have like 10 beans in there. So it's that easy. Also any kind of juice container you have that has a lid on the top that you can unscrew and put back. So those are the very easiest rhythmic instruments that you can make at home. You can also make a scratcher out of a piece of corrugated cardboard. You can take the cardboard, you can start one end right along the edge and you can start peeling back the paper like that on one side. I've done that over here. So you peel it back and look at that. It exposes a scratcher right there. Now this scratcher you can use by itself. You can use your fingernails, you can use a pencil, or if you really want to get fancy, 
you could take a balloon and blow it up and then put paper mache over the balloon to make a shape of an animal like this fancy uh, guido right here. And then you could tape the corrugated, a small piece of the corrugated um, cardboard to the middle of your animal, to the belly of your animal, and you could decorate the animal. That would be if you really want to get fancy. I'll give you a website that you can go to if you decide you want to do something as adventurous as making a paper mache uh, scratcher or guiro. Now my friend Sasha is going to show you how she made some instruments with her children. Hi, good afternoon. I'm so glad we can be with you today. Um, we are going to look at how to make shakers to play with the music recordings. So I have two special helpers with me today. I have Andre and Amelia, and they are going to be making shakers. So first, we just need a simple tube, something that you would find around the house, such as, where did, it, where did that come from, Amelia? Toilet paper roll. A toilet paper roll. And Andre, what about yours? A toilet paper roll. A toilet paper roll. Okay, so when a roll of toilet paper is out, you can use the roll to make a shaker. First, we need to cover the end. Now, you can cover the end with so many different materials. I'm going to choose foil because I really like the way that it sounds when the materials inside hit it. But you can also use paper, or you can use saran wrap, um, all tape. kinds of things. So these are small enough that I can tear this in half. And here's how we're gonna secure it, ready? So fold this in half, fold your paper in half. Okay. Fold it in half, uh, this direction, good question this direction so that it's wide enough. Very good, Andre. What about this part? And we are gonna cover. Does it have to be perfect? No, it doesn't have to. It does not have to be perfect at all. That's an excellent question. Not at all, because we're just gonna bunch it up like this anyway. We're gonna bunch it up on the end of this tube. Tape it? Now you wanna be sure that the end covers all of the tube because we're gonna fill this with material and we don't want it to spill out. So something that you can do is you can use scissors to trim the extra where it hangs off. I see that there's some extra material here and I might just cut this off so that I have a little bit of a cleaner edge and so that taping it uh, works a little better. Okay, so then it just looks like our toilet paper tube is wearing an aluminum foil hat. All right, but that is not gonna stay on oh like that. Not done. Oh, you're not done. Okay, you keep working while we're doing this. And so there are different ways to secure this. You can secure it with tape. You can secure it with rubber bands. Um, any kind of tape is fine. Can you do both? You can do both, and I think we should try both. So I'm gonna start with scotch tape. And... Mm -hmm. I'll take all the extra no, 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 no. foil. Ah, okay, I need you to hand. hold this on tight, or I'll hold it on tight and you wrap this around, okay? So Andre is gonna wrap the tape around, wrap it tightly, pull it tight. Very good. You want the ends of the tape to meet on the other side. And if there's a little gap, like there's a little gap right here, that's no problem at all. This doesn't have to be a precise measurement. You just take one extra piece of tape and cover that Whoa. gap. Now that alone is not gonna be enough to hold it because we're gonna be shaking these. So I like to take an extra piece of tape, may I borrow this? When you're done, all right. And I like to make a long piece and place it over the top in one direction like that. And then Andre, we are, oops, not yet, nothing's in it. And How then we're long going, does it have to be? That is just right. 
And then we're going to take another piece and make this an X on the top. Like this. And then I'm going to go one more time around the outside just to secure the tape that we've put on. And this is the first step in making your shaker, is making sure you have one end completely secured on the bottom and one end open so that it can be filled. Hi, welcome to part two of making your shakers. In the last part, we filled, uh, we covered the bottom of a tube with aluminum foil or any other material and we secured it with tape. And now we are going to add material to the inside. I have my helpers, Amelia and Andre. Amelia, can you tell me what happens when we put this inside? Why would we put something inside a toilet paper tube? To make it shake. To make it shake? Your hand makes it shake. What happens I mean, when you put that inside a tube? What makes happens? The sh if there was no, no rice, no beans, no paper, no any rocks, no any, whatever you're using, it would just be thin air. It would be thinner. It would make this sound? Nothing. Nothing. But when you put it in. Okay, now, now, and this is, a, wait, 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 wait. We have two options here. We have beans and we have rice. I'm going to do some of both. Some of both. That's it. It's your shaker. You get to decide what you want to do. Now, there are so many objects that you can put inside your shaker. Uh, you can put sprinkles. You can put rocks, aquarium rocks. You can put all kinds of things inside it, and everything you put in makes a slightly different noise. So I chose two of the most common pantry items because you might have them laying around your home. Now we don't have a funnel handy and a funnel yeah. is like a V-shaped uh, gadget that helps you pour something from a bigger area into a smaller area, but it's no problem to just make a funnel with a piece of paper. So to make your own funnel, you just roll up the piece of paper from the side and it will go like this. And then I'm going to release it and let it expand. So you can see that I have this big area to pour into and it's gonna go right in here without spilling rice or beans everywhere. So Andre, why don't you choose um, rice or beans first? What would you like to put in your shaker? Um, some rice and some beans. Okay, so which I'll do one? the rice. Okay, take a small scoop. Why not a okay. big one? Well, why not a big one? We're gonna hear it. Now let's hear what that sounds like with just the beans. Ah, it's kind of a gentle sound, a lower sound. What's it like Can with I rice? Can I put this one in? Oh, I might. Okay, now let's see what it sounds like with rice and beans. Ah, a little lighter. So the rice gave it kind of a lighter sound, and the beans gave it uh, a lower sound. And these are darker and heavier, and there are fewer pieces of them. And you can even kind of hear that when you just lift up the material with your hands. This makes a medium lower sound and this is a much gentler sound because it's a smaller material. Yes, that made the exact sound I was thinking of. It made the exact sound you're thinking of. I'm so glad. Okay, don't shake it yet because we want to cover that end. Also, so do the same thing as the top. So I'm going to get Amelia set up with a funnel and put into your put into your shaker what you would like. Rice first this time. Rice first. Now why don't you shake it when it has only rice in there since That's we already good. heard what it sounds can like. Can like this one? It can be as much as you want. Okay. Now shake it like that first. Oh, that sounds very full. Okay, is that what you're thinking of? Whoa, that's a full shaker. So, a full shaker sounds like this. Now, what do we need to do to the other side? And that's why you're going to want to wait to cover the end until you shake the end of it because it's full of rice and beans and it has no lid on. There's no lid, it goes everywhere. So, we're gonna take the same piece of foil, or the same idea that we did earlier, which is a small piece of foil, and we're gonna put it over the top, 
And then once that's over the top, you can use your scissors and I would cut along here. Okay, very good. Here, oops. Yeah, just cut off the extra, give it a haircut. My hand needs a phone How about these? I don't tell if it's this kind of fiddle, that kind of fiddle. Wow. That so you want to leave, yeah. Very good, Andre. I think I cut his hair too much. I think it's just right. Okay, so now you're going to want to tape it the same way that we taped. I'll take the extra one. Okay, same way. Now I might actually just trim a little extra off of hers. Yeah, a little extra off of mine too. Okay. Since it's such a small tube, and it's more manageable for the tape to hold down when it's a little tidier. So, we'll go around the way here. And that's just the first oh, level of securing. Now I noticed that it's pretty short here where it was folded. So I'm gonna just be extra sure to tape that with my piece of tape that goes over the top I and make sure that. no rice I and no beans tape. escape. And that's right, everybody needs tape. Everybody needs tape to make it work. Do you want me to tear it for you? No. Okay. Fantastic. No. Now it's also important so this has been taped so well around the foil. I want to see a layer of tape between the foil and the cardboard because that's where that's where it can come apart. So if a little piece of rice comes down the foil, it will get trapped if this is taped. Oh, I see that Andre has secured both ends of his shaker. So maybe here for a minute. And what I noticed of when you fake it this way, it makes a different sound when you fake it this way. That is a fantastic observation. You get to choose and make your own shaker exactly as you want it to sound. That means you can put in one bean, means you can put in 50 beans, Wait. it means you can put in one grain of rice. Half a bean? Or an half a bean, an entire scoop of rice, or whatever variation you want. One grain of rice? Because it's your instrument and you get to decide. So in the next section of this, we are going to look at different size shakers. So welcome back. We have made so many shakers and Amelia and Andre are here to help us count how many shakers we've made. Amelia and Andre, will you please line them up neatly on the table and count how many shakers, including the Tupperware containers. These? Yes. So count how many shakers we've made. Can you please count? Seven. Seven. Can you touch each one and count? One, two, three, four, five, six. What? Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven. Now, what about the Tupperware containers? Can those be shakers as well? Touch them. What do you think? Can you shake it? So, if we include those, I mean, Andre, if we include those, how many shakers do we have now? Nine! That's right! Now, Wait. you have a very... No, I thought it was... Oh, I thought we just added one. <laughs> and how many did we add? Two. Okay, so you have a very important task that requires working together. I want you to put these in order oh, from highest sound to lowest sound. Okay, this will be hard. But I know you can do it. Just like a piano goes from high to low, I want you to put the shakers from high to low. It means you're gonna have to shake each one and listen to how high or low it is. This is the highest. This okay. is the lowest. So, the lowest on this. this is. Whoa, no. Okay, so which end are you gonna put the highest one on? You've decided that you know which this end. Okay, so highest goes there. Oh yeah, this one. So this is where they're going. Let me see this. 
Now the long ones, I want you to lay them on the table so they don't fall. This one can stay. Can you please lay it down though? Okay. Other, other direction. Oh. Yeah. This one's as long as our table. Longer. Wait, highest to lowest? Highest to lowest. You can make it out of a container you already have, like an orange juice container or a Tupperware or oatmeal, or you can make the tube containers that we demonstrated. So think about what kind of sound do you want? Do you want to make really loud? Do you want to make high? Do you want to make low? And then plan it accordingly. And you can always take beans out, put them in, take rice out, put it in, and change the sound that you want. So when we come back, we are going to choose one of these instruments and play it with a song. So we have put these in order from highest to lowest. Amelia, will you please play the highest shakers in order? Wow, now, good, so that was highest to lowest. And wow. Amelia, you observed that the last one was really loud. Why do you think it's so loud? Andre, Amelia, why is this one so loud? We're gonna look at this, so this is. I, beans are heavier than rice, and I know. Yes, that's true, beans are heavier than rice. But why else might it be loud, Andre? But I know it's louder than this because it has more beans. It has more beans. Now, what about the material? Think about there are more beans in the oatmeal container than the orange juice container. Definitely. Now, shake the orange juice container. Okay. Ah, it's a bigger container. And it's bigger, but it's also what? Wider. Wider. Yeah. And what's the material like on the outside? Plastic, like glass and. Plastic. Right, so a, it's not cardboard. So a harder material is going to make a louder sound mm -hmm. than a lighter material. And something that's interesting that you weren't expecting probably is when we look at the order of highest to lowest sounds right here, it doesn't necessarily go from smallest to biggest. Because smallest to biggest would be... This one. Then it would be this one. Now. It's really confusing. So I'm going to ask you to organize this in a different way. Oh. Andre, can you please take all the pre made containers, so the Tupperware, the orange juice, and the oatmeal? And Amelia, will you please organize the, the tubes, the cardboard tubes, from highest to lowest? Yes. Yeah. So you take this. This is all you need, and this is all I need. Wait, okay. highest to lowest or? Highest to lowest. Wait, what, the sound? Mm-hmm, the pitch. Yep, okay. Okay. I know that stays there. I, ha I, I can just leave mine. So you're saying that the longer tube is higher than the tiny Wait, tube. No, 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 the first tube is higher than the tiny tube. Wait. Shake the first two again. Interesting. Now, do you know what that small tube has in it, the first tube? Rice. That has rice and beans, but the first tube has? Only rice. Only rice, so it makes a higher sound despite being longer. Now, what are we gonna learn from Andre's? So I noticed about this, it almost sounds like thunder. <gasps> it sounds like thunder. Now, is that gonna be low or high? Ha, low. Okay, so put it on the end. 
Very good. Now, which of yours is is the highest sounding? Uh huh. This one. The highest. So put that on the other end. So put that over here. Okay. So you have your highest, and you have your lowest. Now, where do those go? Which one of those is higher? Between the two in your hand. Now my friend Carla, the flute player in our quintet, is going to show you how you can make a flute-like instrument out of a bottle. This is a, one of the more fun things on the planet to do, is you can make an instrument almost out of anything. Uh, I have here some things, a bowl, and you know that you can blow across some of these items and make a flute sound. And they make different pitches, how high or low they are playing, depending on how big the bottles are. Or another easy way to make an instrument, if you have a water bottle or a soda bottle or whatever kind of plastic bottle, you can make a wonderful little instrument out of this. I have some water in here and you can blow across the top of this and make a sound sort of like a flute. <laughs> Now, if you empty out a little more of the water, I don't know if you can tell, but the water's here. I'm gonna empty out some. Now the water's down to there, and you'll have a different tone, a different pitch. A little more. Lots of fun, and not only that, but to decorate it, I took a little piece of colored construction paper, just a plain piece of paper. I liked green because the bottle was. And then I made slits up with the uh, scissors, just cut up little slits. Look at, it almost looks like a little grass skirt. And then you can put it around the bottle Dress it up, little piece of tape there, and you have a little skirt for the bottle. And then I made a little face. I'm going to do this this way. On the bottom, I drew a little lip. A little mouth, I should say, a mouth, a smiley mouth, and a couple of eyes on top. There's one, there's another, kind of looking in at each other. Look at that, I hope you can see that. There's a little fun little instrument you can play. So there's lots you can do at home with stuff that's sitting around. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have fun with your, your instrument making process. We hope you'll have some fun making instruments at home. Please save them, and we'll have you play along with us in our next video. In the meantime, you can have some fun playing with any music you might hear at your house, on TV, on the radio, on, the, on your computer, wherever, and make up your own songs and play with your rhythm. See you soon. Bye.